Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm Catherine. And we are in Southern Oregon, and this is our 30-foot Pacific Yurt. We're excited to show you around. We landed with Pacific Yurt because we were able to tour their facility, really touch it and feel it and see it. It is vinyl siding. It has a seven layer reflective insulation. The doors came with it, so you can go onto their website and kind of pick and choose if you want French door, single door, front door, back door, where you want the doors, where you want the windows, so all that. First off, what we did is dig out all of our footings here. I think it was 33 of them. And then we just started putting our joists in. We went with tongue and groove pine flooring and two inch thick foam insulation. If I had to go back and do it again, I would have laid insulation down first, but I didn't. So I had to crawl under there and start putting it in. But we do need to skirt it. I've just kind of been waiting on a good day that I want to tackle it and that day's coming soon. Initially we had just a porch here, no roof or anything for it. And then I just called a buddy up and said, I need to build a roof. So he came and helped me. The chimney pipe there, a lot of people I've seen use metal poles. I came up with this option and I just got four by four pressure treated posts as long as I can get. And I married them together in my own fashion and it works for me. We had an existing breaker box that we tapped into and brought this over. So we didn't have to do too much for that. After living in it for a while, we realized we needed more space. So that's when we incorporated the laundry room. We do have a washer and dryer. This is kind of my closet and Kate has taken over slightly. And that houses our water heater and our manifold and everything. A lot of our utilities are outside. This is our woodshed. I just built this just a month or two ago because I got tired of coming out and tearing a tarp over my wood pile and getting all muddy and wet. And so I just saved everything from our tear down and cut some trees off the mountain for it. And yeah, it works for us. This video is sponsored by Vessi. Listen, nobody likes to walk around and step in a puddle and end up with their socks all wet. So get Vessi shoes. They're 100% waterproof, which is great for the unpredictable spring weather. And they're made from Dymatex, a material that doesn't feel like it should be waterproof, but it is. It keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the colder weather. These shoes are comfortable, durable, and they're breathable. They've got incredible grip and they'll keep your feet warm and dry. So check out the Vessis and other styles at Vessi.com forward slash Florb and get your Vessi sneakers in the size that you want now and use code FLOOR for 15% off your order. And remember to subscribe. So we were living in a house that was right next door to the yurt and we had been living there for about six years so. It was just having some electrical issues and it was time for a new space and so we started researching alternative living spaces and a yurt was something that we were both really drawn to. And we knew it would be a space that would connect us to nature and that's something that was important to us. Pacific Yurt is really close by to here. It's only about 45 minutes away which is the company that made this yurt. We went there and checked it out and we fell in love immediately. Toward the facility up there we were like no oh, so it's a little small and then we saw the 30 footer and we're like yeah that's at least what we have to have. Basically it came with the vinyl siding, the lattice, the windows, doors, the dome and then that was it. We really wanted to see like how much of the yurt we could put together without investing a whole bunch of money and going to Lowe's and just buying materials that were new. Like it was important to us to use reclaimed and recycled materials as much as we could. And there was a huge community too online of people who we could reach out to that gave us advice. A lot of YouTube videos were super helpful. The long part was of course building everything inside and if we had tons of money it probably could have gotten done in just a few months. We changed the layout quite a few times until we decided on this. We like watched the sun come in in the mornings and tried to figure out like where the sun was going to be because we wanted the kitchen to be sunny in the mornings because that's where we're hanging out in the mornings. Also try to centrally locate all of my plumbing so you know I can line everything up without you know, running a bunch of plumbing lines and all that. Doing like actually getting the vinyl on and everything erected it was three days. But really it took us about two years to really kind of collect all the pieces and put it all together. In the yurt, we're, we're limited in space, so we have to get really creative as like where we put things in storage. And so I just keep adding more hooks to this that Gregory put recycled wood on the side to give it a little update. This is where we store our, most of our food and our appliances down on the bottom. 
having a good refrigerator is important to hold all of our yummy things in there. Water here on the property is not drinkable, and so we have a Berkey, which this is one of the most valuable assets that we have in the yurt. This can filter out any impurities and gives us like amazing, delicious water. We used recycled materials for the countertops, and this was part of the recycled cabinetry that came out of Cottage Grove up north. We searched a really long time for a copper sink because we thought that that would be a really cool addition to the yurt and we found the perfect one at a really great price, which was cool for us. This is a stone backsplash that I did when we first moved in. This was a really fun project. It was my first time doing it and I just really, really enjoyed uh, cementing stones to the wall. It, I got to just be a little creative and have fun with you know the th materials that I, that I like to work with every day. So this shelf right here is made from Pacific Yew wood. This was a piece of wood that we had been holding on to for years and then when we built the yurt, we knew exactly where it was gonna be. So Gregory made this out of a bunch of scrap materials and it just holds all of our vases and mugs made from local potters and artists that we adore. This counter right here is made from redwood and this was a really great learning experience for us about how redwood works and we really should have let it cure much longer because we have a big crack in it. So this is something that we're gonna replace eventually even though it's still super beautiful just as it is. Three of the four supports that supports our loft are right here. They're lodgepole pines harvested from Diamond Lake. It's pretty cozy up here. It's just enough room for us to sleep comfortably and for our kitties up here to snuggle with us and sleep comfortably. When I stand up, my head is just brushing the top of the dome. So it's, it's pretty snug, but when we lay in bed, we can look out and see the moon and the stars. And it's just great. We really, we really enjoy it. So while the plants are real, this one is a devil's ivy that I've had for probably 17 years. It's been getting really cold in here. I can tell that they're, they're a little stressed, but the summer is the summer where we're gonna repot everything and get them thriving again, but they generally do really well in here because the lighting is so good. This accent wall is pretty funky. This is one of the things we did actually purchase. And we just love it at lots of different textures and colors. It really just tied all the other colors of wood together. This door right here, Gregory also built. All this wood here is from a redwood tree that was on my childhood property. Unfortunately, the redwood tree was messing up the foundation of my parents' house, so they had to take it down, but we used every bit of it to make material for us and for other people, so part of that tree is all over our area. One thing that I knew for sure when we moved into the yurt is that I wanted a clawfoot tub. We got this before we even had the yurt, and this clawfoot tub is actually kind of famous because it was in the movie Fire in the Sky. Guy, which is a really cool alien movie that was filmed in our area here. So the tub is kind of a celebrity tub and, and we love it for that. But everything else in here, this was a recycled drawer. Sink right here is made from an artist that I found on Etsy. Wood that we used is probably one of my favorite parts of the yurt because this wood came from a barn that was built by some of the first settlers that came off of the Oregon Trail in the late 1800s. We thought about what it'd be like having a composting toilet and for us it just didn't seem like a good fit. So our toilet is just attached to our septic system and it's just what you see is what you get. So this dresser I've had for probably about 15 years. It actually came from Goodwill and I've been just trucking it along with me every place I live. A little book nook that Greg's dad built. They have a bookstore here locally and so books are always something that we have a plentiful amount of. For us, we don't really like looking at a TV if we're not using it, but of course, like every man, we do have a TV, but we keep it covered when it's not in use. And over here we have uh, Earthly Ancestors Studio. Before we used to have her in our living room doing her, her jewelry making and she quickly outgrew that. So it was time to build her a shop. A lot of the materials inside are recycled materials from our old house and from the porch that was built behind our old house. I'm a silversmith goldsmith and lapidary artists. Really love creating powerful and potent pieces for men and women to make them feel good and make them feel grounded or protected or loved. Everyone is beautiful and everyone is sacred and I really put that into my artwork. 
So this is my stone cutting machine. This is what I use to cut stones. They start in rough shapes like this and eventually end up in cabochons. This is a rolling mill. You can put in pieces of wire silver or sheet silver and I, it rolls it out and makes it flatter and I can put impressions on it or textures on it. During the winter months, it can get not as bright in here as I like, so I, I try to get my plants all together to keep them fed and happy with some, with some light during the winter. This tool I love, this is something that I use quite a bit. It's a drill press that I put in hollow diamond bit tips, and this is how I cut my crescent moons. I use a lot of moon-shaped stones in my artwork, and so this is the first process, which is cutting out the inside of the moon. There's so many minerals and organs, so I've been so lucky to go rock hounding. This is quartz, this is from Arkansas. Quartz is definitely a mineral that I, I feel very close to. It helps keep me grounded. And and I, I love skulls, like all the skulls that we have are all collected from just finding them out in the woods or people have given them to us who are also just avid hikers and campers. And I have a game where I ask people if they can guess what kind of animal it is. And 90% of the time, the adults have no clue, but the children get it. I don't know if you guys can tell what it is, but it's a giraffe. Um, his name is Gerald and he came from the Smithsonian. They do auctions every once in a while and so I was able to snag him through that. This is where I solder all my jewelry. I use acetylene and oxygen as my heat source. This is where I start to build my pieces and carve and shape um, using the silver to build pieces around stones. I make everything from scratch so everything is handmade. It, it kind of made us feel like we can do anything. Like if we can build a home for ourselves, uh, what else could we do? Like if we could learn how to do plumbing and do some of the electricity and do, you know, frame walls. And it's like we, there's, there's really not much else that could stop us as far as just like taking the time to learn a new trade. Like we've got it.